Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, um, in May we have two booktubers, Kim of Middle of the Book March and Marilyn Maya Mendoza. They are organizing a reading event this month and that is Mental Health May. And um, <clears throat> I seldom do TBR videos, I seldom set up TBR these days, but I experimented with TBR last month and I thought that it was kind of successful <laughs> um, and I did include some fairly forgiving clauses such as I was able to you know I was allowed to um, DNF and so I thought why not try again and because I think this reading uh, event this readathon is honestly something that I feel really strongly about it's about mental health I thought why not just do a TVR video and try and commit to that TBR, you know, accountability and stuff. <laughs> so, I am going to show you some of the books that I uh, would like to read for this. And um, originally I have more. I had more books in my TBR, but then I thought, why not be a, a little bit more practical? And so I trimmed my list uh, down to only four books. So, um... But yeah, before I talk about all of the books that I want to read, um, I just kind of want to say that um, I think all of the books that I will mention won't be uh, books that really put like a very strong emphasis uh, on a particular condition. Um, it won't be, I think it won't be like uh, the kind of books that really like centers around the mental health condition that it wants to discuss but rather most of the, all of the books that I'm going to talk about are just going to be about people in general but there are people with issues that could be diagnosed but they are not necessarily diagnosed in the book but you could certainly do that and I think mental health professionals when they read these books they can certainly do their own diagnosis as well um, my point is that uh, Diagnosis aren't exactly like the most important things in these books, but rather it is the portrayals of the actions of the characters and what they do and how that affects their motivations and all of that. Uh, those are going to be the focus in these books, but I feel like they fit the theme of mental health really well because they are about people who cope with um, issues that uh, really adversely affect their lives. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to start with the first one, and that is, and I think this might be, um, I'm, I'm not sure how well it will fit Mental Health May, but I'm just going to put it out here. It's Olive Again by Elizabeth Strout. So, for this book, um, again, you know, I, I don't know how well it will fit uh, the theme of mental health. But the reason why I chose this book is because it is the sequel or a continuation of the first book and that was Olive Kitteridge. And when I read Olive Kitteridge, um, my thought was that book was a very good um, portrayal of depression. The main character in that book Olive is someone who obviously has depression and uh, but the thing is that book does not like tell it very clearly it does not say that you know Olive has depression it doesn't it doesn't say something like that it just it just tells you who Olive is and shows you what Olive does she sometimes you know she she would not have good days and she would have bad days she would treat her kids badly but then she would treat strangers really nicely and then sometimes she would steal bras but mostly it's about the action that olive does um through the stories that it to you know it tells in that book and for someone who is familiar with um signs of depressions um it can be quite obvious, you know, that Olive certainly has that issue. And if you watch the TV adaptation, it is even more obvious. So, 
I imagine as the continuation of that book. This book, which is also a series of short stories, interconnected short stories, might also explore that side of Olive as well. So I, that is why I don't know how well this book will fit the mental health uh, theme of this readathon. But then, um, you know, uh, continuing the spirit of the first book, I imagine that this may um, show like more, uh, you know, uh, more sides of Olive Kitteridge that kind of has something to do with her, um, uh, with her mental well-being. So that is my reason for choosing this book. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move to the next one, and I would say the next two books that are kind of similarly related to each other because um, if I were to kind of declare what mental health issues that they are that they will mostly deal with, it will be PTSD. And uh, so I have two very different books. So the first one is uh, Pat Barker's Regeneration. Uh, this is a historical fiction and it is part of a trilogy. This is the first book of the trilogy. And this is about uh, a psychiatrist whose name is William Rivers set in 1917 and William Rivers is treating shell-shocked soldiers who fought in the uh, First World War. Now beyond that I'm not sure how this book will unfold um, but I think it's pretty obvious that there is going to be a lot of elements on, uh, and, and, and portrayals and discussions of PTSD especially in the context of war in this book. Um, so that's why I chose this and another one is also a classic a very well-known classic I would say and, and this is Toni Morrison's Beloved um, I really love Toni Morrison's writing although her writing can be kind of hard to get into because she tends to write things um, in, in a very graphically punchy way <laughs> you know which is really beautiful but it can be quite difficult to to read um, it can be quite emotionally difficult and I imagine that this one is going to be like that as well and uh, yeah I think this is uh, in this book the character has some sort of PTSD as well so the main premise of this book is that we have a character named uh, uh, Sethi I think that's how you call her name um, so basically the main thing about this book is that at the beginning of the book uh, she kills her baby daughter and that was partly because of her experience as uh, someone who, uh, who, ex uh, who experienced the, the atrocity of uh, being enslaved um, and that certainly leaves like a um, really negative mark on her life and she doesn't want her baby to uh, go through that experience when she gets older and so she makes that decision however that decision is going to literally haunt her um, in later years so I think that is really exciting um, and in terms of uh, how it fits the theme. I think it fits really well uh, even though it doesn't like state outright like this character has this mental health issues but that is certainly uh, a, a situation where you can see a character is undergoing some kind of um, mental health crisis. So the final book I'm going to feature is something that I read before but then I dropped it because I thought it was a little bit too hard to read. <laughs> it's The Piano Teacher by Elfriede Jelinek and this one was originally written in German and was translated uh, into English by Joachim Neugroschel. Um, so this book it is about a piano teacher. Her name is Erika Kohut and, uh, and she lives in Vienna and uh, she has some kind of I would say dysfunctional relationship with her mom um, from what I've read from the few pages I've read before um, the relationship is somewhat toxic um, the mom is 
someone who sort of uh, who is kind of controlling, and at the same time, Erica sort of becomes this adult woman who sort of develops some kind of um, dependency on her mom, and basically both of them just sort of live with this really uh, dysfunctional codependency with each other, and well, you know. Obviously, that is something that one probably these days would suggest therapy for, you know, because it is not healthy. And because of that unhealthy dynamics that she has with her mom, um, Erica would eventually, do, you know, would eventually do things that are sort of destructive. She gets into a relationship with a student named um, Walter Klemmer. And uh, basically what it says at the description at the back of this book, this relationship is going to be very destructive. <laughs> Duh. Uh, because, you know, you have characters who just, I would say, you know, in the most general terms, you have characters who don't really know how to deal with things, you know, especially when it comes to relationship. Or at least that's what I expect is going to happen in this book and you know that that is how it seems to look like so um i'm quite excited to try reading this one again i tried it before but then i thought it was kind of emotionally draining because whoa uh reading about erica and how she you know her relation relations relationship with her mom it is kind of frustrating the way that they talk to one another and the way they just feed off one another's negative energy is just kind of... Uh, <laughs> it makes you want to pull your hair. <laughs> anyway, uh, these are all of the books that I am planning to read uh, in conjunction for Mental Health May Readathon. Um, let me know if you have read any of these books and uh, what you think about them. Uh, and if you plan to join the readathon as well, let me know what you're reading. And if you have a video for it, just let me know and I'll check it out. Um, or anything else just, you know, you just want to talk about. Anything, just throw it down there. Whatever. Um, uh, but yeah, other than that, I'll see you again in a different video. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching and bye.